Hey guys, and welcome to my kitchen. This is just part of my shop. Anyway, I just got done with this cherry bowl. And the reason I did a cherry bowl was I wanted to use a wet wood that I knew was notorious about cracking and warping. And cherry is. It's one of the worst in my opinion. Uh, maybe elm is worse than that, but I, I don't like elm. So that's side point. So anyway, I just got done with this. I rough turned it to about an inch here and an inch in the bottom. I put it in my dehydrator for 18 hours at 115 degrees. It came out with zero moisture on, on my meter. Lost a pound and a half of weight. Uh, then I, you know, put it on a lathe, turned it, finished it, and all that kind of stuff. And it had a big old tenon right here, 100 millimeter tenon. And it was about, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch to, oh, maybe three-eighths thick. So I cut it off, and then I put the meter right here. So what that made that half of that, and I had moisture in here in, at about 12%. So I put it back in upside down for four hours at 95 degrees, and this right now in those letters uh, checks out at 4%. So, you know. This, this works. There is no ifs, ands, and buts about it. It works. So, it's, it's my go-to method henceforth and thereafter. So let's get on with it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the whole cotton-picking thing. Show you how I did it and all that kind of stuff. Pretty bowl. One of my better ones. And I wasn't even trying to make a real pretty bowl. I was trying to show you how to dry it. Hello and welcome. As usual. Well, what I got here is a piece of cherry I got out of the backyard. It's been out in the weather. It's uh, been cut a long time, but it's been in the weather, so, you know, it gets the rain and everything. It uh, looks pretty stable, and uh, the, uh, the pith is right here, and it runs through at an angle, and it comes out right here. So if this bowl is going to crack at all, you know, later on it's already had some little ones here, it's going to be from the pith. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the moisture on this and uh, we're going to turn it down to you know a rough bowl, just, just a common bowl and it's going to be about an inch thick and then I'm going to put it in the dehydrator overnight at a slower rate, at a lower temperature, maybe like for 12, 15 hours and what I'm looking for is to see how much it warps and cracks because uh, cherry in my experience is notorious about cracking later on. I mean, it just keeps on cracking. So I'm thinking, you know, if we get it dry now and turn and finish turning it, we might be all right. So I've already checked this. I know it is, but I'm going to check it anyway for you guys. So I'm going to come in right in here at the pith and I'm going to poke it and it's 18.3. All right. And I'm going to come up here to the top near, near the uh, face plate and check it there. Uh, it's 17.9. And we'll just go ahead and do the bottom for drains. That's some pretty drain right there. That's why I chose that to be the, to be the bottom. And what is it going to be? You know, right? 17.9. So, you know, I guess we could say it's 18% all the way around. So we're looking at 18% today. I will check it when we get it rough turned, and we'll see what it is inside and out. Then we'll go put it in the uh, dehydrator and see how it works. A friend of mine said, "Well, he I knew, I knew he didn't have to tell me." But anyway, uh, the honey locust is a pretty stable wood. It really, even even when you don't hardly do anything, it, it doesn't hardly crack or, or warp very bad. I mean, it does, but not bad at all. So let me get this on the lathe. And I'm going to start going to start right here, wrapping around it. And I'll put a tin in here as usual. And we'll get the inside roughed out. No, no finishes, no nothing. And we'll get this in the in the dehydrator. And tomorrow we'll come out and we'll see what we got. All right, I'm going to start uh, <clears throat> by coming around here, just rounding it, and then I'll work my way. You know, to getting this all around, it's just going to be a plain Jane bowl, nothing fancy. 
Uh, once I get it around it, I'll come in here if you ever measure and we'll put a tenon right here. Flip it around, hollow out the inside. That's the plan. So I've got it on here. It's uh, It does well. Go ahead and whirl it up to about a grand. It's not going nowhere. It's on a face plate. Of course, I'm going to start with my beaver. That looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead right now and uh, put some CA around that tip. And I would do it regardless. Because if it's going to crack, that's where it's going to do it. So you might as well put some around it right in the very beginning. Because you know that's what's going to happen. You might as well just go ahead and you know, we know we're going to, have to turn it again anyway. So let's go ahead and reinforce this a little bit. This is, I do this standard. This is nothing special about this particular turning. This is a standard way I do it every time. Look at here, that stuff is, that's wet. right here. It doesn't really need it very much there, but I'm going to do it anyway just to give it a little bit of, of extra. All right, I think we're ready to flip it around and, and get that inside cleaned down. You know this is pretty wet, so you've got to treat it a little different. I have found a little secret, and I'll show it to you. Sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. What I'm going to do Spray right this with a little silicone spray. Okay. I'll whirl this thing up to about three bills. There you go. 296, close enough. See how it does that right there? That's what sticks them. Well, yeah, that sort of proves my, my sharpening technique. Really now works. we're going to put my little safety deal in. I already did it. I like to give it a little more room in here. And this is just in case that tendon don't hold. I have no doubt it will, but you know how it goes. I'm going to be safe and sorry. And see if we can't get this rest back over here in place. And we're going to start off with the beaver and we're going to use that large round cutter. 
And that's the two tools that we'll be using in here. And we're going to come in here. Make sure I'm on the level and I'm perfect. And that's what we're going to do. All right. Put my face shield on and let's get this rascal done. Turn it a grand. Well, I'm bad about that. I'm not thinking about moving the camera. So you'll have to forgive me a little bit. I'll just get into my own little world there. All right, I think that'll get it. Let's try it again. Play it again, Sam. Well, it looks like tenon's good because I was laying the metal to it there. If it was going to come off, it would have done it then, wouldn't it? I was going to wait it this time, didn't I? 14-4. 17. Try right here, just to make sure we're in 15. All right, here. Yes, I know. Hit it. 15-3. Seventeen three. Fifteen to seventeen. I'm gonna get the scales out too here in a second. Alright, seventeen inside, fifteen on the outside. Well, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it says three pounds, eighteen ounces. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that'll help or not. Now, somebody asked about, they didn't think this thing had a fan. This thing has a fan, so it's moving air all the time. It's not, it's not just uh, convection heat, you know. It's moving it all the time. Okay, here, get it like that, okay. And I might even be more gooder. Whoa, Betsy. That ain't gonna, it ain't gonna stay there. Well, it might stay like that. I tell you what, just to make, we did the other one just like this. Let's do this one the same way. All right, except for one thing, I'm going to put this on a different, I do it 18 hours and 18 hours. All right, I think it's going. Yeah, this is 1759, been there one minute. Okay, it's going to be 18 hours and 115 degrees. That's not the same as the other, but I think the other was too fast. Yeah. Uh, I have to sort of learn how to do this. I do jerky. This ain't jerky. 
So there you are, my friends. Please leave everything like it is, and we'll we'll check it tomorrow. We have a good afternoon. It's actually the next afternoon. Uh, I had to go to a sad occasion this morning. Just you know, the circle of life continues. So that's what happens. Anyway, uh, I have not looked at it, guys. I peeked through the glass, but I have not opened it. And it's been I don't know how long, but I uh, I, I left it in here uh, under. Heat and air, I guess, for 18 hours at 115 degrees. Uh, so we're going to see. I've got the previous weight was uh, three three pounds 18 ounces and kilograms was I don't know 1410. And the moisture was uh, 17 on the inside and 15 on the outside. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. All right, right away I see a crack right there. Uh, nothing I can't handle. I don't, I don't, it feels lighter. Got one right here. In the, naturally, they're always going to be around the pit. This, the rest of it looks good, guys. Well, let's see what happened here. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Dun, 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 dun. All right, got 2.8 pounds. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, which went from three, so it lost uh, a pound and 10 ounces. 18, yeah, a pound and 10 ounces. Boy, that's okay. Let's look at the uh, other thing here. 11.30 on the kilograms. Let's pull this rascal out here. Turn it on. Alright, we are, I put down 17 plus or minus on the inside. So we're going to bottom first. Well, man, I don't know here. Ah, I cannot get it to register nothing, guys. I mean, nothing, zero, zappo. Hard as I push all over the place. You can see that. And I'm pushing, man. Let's try the outside here. <clears throat> nothing. I know the damn thing's working. Let's go right here and all these raggedy ass end grains. Nothing. Alright, I'm going to go get another piece of wood of some sort. All right, uh, this is a piece of the same same wood that I trimmed off whenever I, I cut it out. Still got some bark on it there. And we've got 16.3. So this is working. But, uh, try right in that little softy looking spot. Man, I, I can't get to read anywhere. Can't go much lower because it, it's going to weigh something regardless. All right, we're done. Let's go. Uh, let's go play on the lathe a while. All right, I got it back on the lathe and it's in the exact same spot it was before because I marked the number one position, and uh, I have not whirled it up. You got my word on that. So this will be the first go right here. Let's check it out. Whoa, it didn't work, didn't it? Yeah, I almost forgot to video this. I was going to video it for you guys, but I want to show you. I mean, I know most of you don't need to be shown, but you know, we didn't all start out knowing how to do all this. So I got like a long toothpick here. And I just keep the end a little clean. And this, this was right here. I don't know if you remember now, this was a real wide crack. And this stuff right here, you know, I call it uh, super fine crack fixer. You see, comes out of my dust collector on the inside of the wall of a cloth, you know, bag that catches it all. And I, I put it in there. Well, first I'll back up. I, I put thin CA in it before I even start fixing. So you know, I let so the thin CA I get in there where I can't get in there. And then I use this super fine stuff, and then I come here this thing right here. And after, you know, I've already put some in there, and I'm trying my best to poke it down as far as I can get it. Like that. 
And I'll add that and get that a little bit more and I'll put some more fine CA on there. Because if, if you don't, you're basically only going to see on the top. You just come in here and you know, rub some more in there. Come in here and do it again. I think I had my hands in the way, didn't I? Sorry about that. I do that all the time. And yeah, I put some more. Here's a blow off here. Yeah, it just blew up in my face. Yeah, I put a little bit more in CA in it. I usually lay it in pretty heavy because I want it to saturate. And before that sets up, I'm going to put some more on it right there like that. Okay, that's how I do it. All right, I'm getting okay, ready. I'm going to skip way, way ahead now because uh, most of this video now is just dressing, dressing this bowl up, sanding and putting the finish on, and everybody's seen that a whole bunch of times. So I'm going to go all the way to taking the tendon off. And there's a little surprise under the tendon I want you to see, so we're going to move right there in just a second. Same speed, same tool. I'm going to use this one because it gets right in here like that. Okay, I've got, I've got the uh, lasering done. <clears throat> now I'm going to start uh, putting cedar on the bottom. It'll be a little bit of a rush job. I'm going to use a heat gun to dry it in between each one because I want to get it back in the dehydrator. What I'm thinking <clears throat> in the dehydrator is, you know, I had the bowl sitting down on this. I'm thinking the airflow doesn't get to the bottom. So I think the next one I do, I'm going to do it like part of the way sitting this way and part of the way turned over to see if that does that because this had uh, a maximum of like 12% in there and that's not acceptable. But that was underneath the tenon, so that was about halfway in the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bottom sealed real good and 11, 12 degrees even, 12% even. That's too much. Of course, that could be the wax in there. Let's try it off there. I was on the letters because I didn't want to leave any marks. Okay. See, I didn't want to leave those. I did it. I didn't want to hang it. There you go. Uh, I think it's because I was in the wax in them letters. But <clears throat> we're we're going to put it in there anyway. <clears throat> We are done in here, my friends. <laughs> well, I'm finished with it almost. I'm going to put it back on here for a second. It's got a dull spot right here. I'm going to go ahead and polish it up. And maybe may before I touched it before it dry or something. But I think that turned out to be a beautiful little cherry bowl. I, I just took it out of the dehydrator because when I cut the tenon off, you know, that uh, actually... That made it halfway down through the bottom, if you understand what I mean. And there was moisture in there still. It was 12%. So I, I put it in the dehydrator for uh, four hours at 95 degrees, and it's, it's 4% down here now. So, you know, that's acceptable. So overall, I think it's a real success. I think, you know, we learn every time. This is the second time I've used a dehydrator for this. And overall, I'm extremely pleased I think how you place it in a dehydrator is important because I think the reason 
the bottom didn't get as dry as the sides and stuff is because I set it down like this, see? And into the dehydrator, so the airflow didn't get it. So next time I'm gonna, I do one or two things, or maybe both. Uh, I may take it out and put it back in, you know, in another position. I'm gonna put a tray under and elevate it up off the bottom the best I can. And also, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it over like this uh, because you know you got air blowing and it's it's really sort of hard for the air to get in here. Uh, I think maybe this might be the best way because you know heat rises. So it's going to, you know, come back in here and it's going to wick the moisture out, you know, if it's off the bottom. If it's right on the bottom, it's not going to do that. So anyway, there it is. That's really a pretty little bowl. As far as I can tell, it hadn't done any additional warping, did no additional cracking with that, uh, you know, additional, additional, I'm over, I'm using that word a lot, with that additional um, four hours in there. Do you see a little something right there? But, uh, yeah, it looked like that may have opened up just a hair right there. And I think I'm going to just leave it because i got a beautiful shine on it. And if I come in here trying to fix that, well, you know what's going to happen. And i got to do the whole dang thing over. So here it is. I'm going to take some stills. I think it's really pretty. I'm going to call the dehydrator method a success. With reservations. I mean, you... Like anything else, we have to learn how to use it. So let me take some stills and I'll, I'll get that bottom cleaned up a little bit, excuse me. And we will get this SD card on the computer and edit it and see if we can't publish this rascal. So, you know, tell your friends, subscribe, and call your mama. That's important. You only have one. Catch you later.